Hi friends. So today we are going to talk about the big three. Okay. So on our agenda today, the first point is the strengths and weaknesses of the big three. Secondly, we are going to talk about the barometer, the basis on which just by looking at these three players playing, we can determine whether these are in form or these players are struggling with their form. Okay, so there are some visible signs in their matches that by looking at which we can easily determine if these players are struggling or they are on top of their form, on top of their ability. Okay, and the third point is I am going to give you guys a few examples of a few matches wherein A, the weaknesses of their player, of these players is quite evident. So we can see that these players are not performing well due to one specific shot, one specific weakness and hence the result will also show up the same way and B, the case where the weaknesses of these players were not there. So the example is a specific day in which let's say the backhand of Federer or maybe the first serve of Novak or some of the other shot, I'm just giving an example was actually working very well and of course the match was decided by this factor and they were able to win the match okay so these three things we are going to discuss so first let's start with the strengths and weaknesses now before i get into those points i want to mention it up front that we'll be talking about the weaknesses and strengths with respect to the current time with respect to the current age of the players so maybe when federer was playing in 2006 and 2007, his peak years. So he, uh, you know, most of these weaknesses were not there. His backhand was really good at that time. Even now, I think it's, it's really good. He has recovered. He has improved his backhand after 2016. But still, uh, seeing at the current time, his movement and his speed. So we are going to discuss all these factors referring to the current time. Okay. And secondly, when I say the weaknesses, uh, I mean, we are talking about the big three. So there are actually no weaknesses, but uh, these three shots are relative to their strong points. So, for example, Federer's backhand is relatively a weaker shot than his forehand. So just keep in mind that when I say weakness, it's not necessarily a weakness. It's a, just a relative weakness shot as uh, compared to their other strengths. Okay, so first of all, let's start with Djokovic and uh, we all know that. Uh, so first we'll talk about the strengths of all these three players and then we'll talk about the weaknesses. So let's begin with Djokovic. The primary strength of Djokovic is his backhand. So when we talk about backhands, I think uh, if it's a one handed backhand, then we all know we are talking about Stan Wawrinka. And if it's a two handed backhand, then we have a lot of players, but I think Djokovic has the best backhand in business today. And when we talk about best backhand, we mean, uh, you know, the change in directions that they are able to do from, you know, hitting cross court to going down the line and also the return of serve. So I think the backhand return that Djokovic has is, is terrific. It's awesome. And I think that is why it comes into one of the strengths. Then the second, second strength that Djokovic has is the rally, is the ability to, you know, rally for like 20 shots, 25 shots consistently and still perform to the best of his ability, still perform, still be able to win those rallies. So I think that is one of his strengths. In other words, we can say that the rhythm in his shots is very good. So if, uh, for example, he plays against a player who is also equal or who also has the same strength for example Andy Murray so he's also a very good rally player but because Djokovic is better in that category he ends up winning the matches against Murray even though the matches are close but in the end Djokovic just has the extra gear so that is why I think uh, rally is also one of the strengths that Djokovic has then we have the uh, I think we all already discussed the backhand the direction change even on the forehand side, Djokovic is able to change the direction and that is a very, uh, very important point because when you rally cross court to cross court or, you know, at middle of the point, if you are able to change the direction, then it takes away, uh, you know, the strength, it takes away the, uh, the ability to dictate from the other player. 
so for example if federer is rallying against nadal and somehow he gets uh, he has that ability to easily change the direction on his backhand and go to nadal's backhand and hit his backhand down the line every now and then then it takes that ability away from nadal to use his forehand to constantly you know push federer outside the doubles alley with his cross court angled forehand and you know then federer has to hit a weak reply and nadal can finish the point but if feder is able to hit the backhand down the line consistently after every two shots or every three shots without making any errors then i think that takes away that ability from nadal and it actually makes the match up more competitive between feder and nadal but unfortunately uh, on clay feder has not been able to do that because of the surface because of the amount of top spin that nadal puts on his shots it's not easy to do and that is why we see feder struggle against nadal mostly especially in the french open where the court is bigger the bounce is higher the conditions are very very much favorable for nadal so we see feder struggle but on the same uh, you know front jokovic does not struggle that much because he is able to somehow counter that using his backhand now the next strength that jokovic has is of course the movement so he is a very good mover uh, regardless of the surface i think australian open surface is his best surface he moves very well on that and even on grass i think i that is he's the only player that i have seen who can slide very well on a grass court in wimbledon and that is why he usually plays well in the rally points he's able to track down a lot of balls that other players don't uh, do and i think even against nadal i think nadal being such a good mover i think the only competition that he gets from any other player in wimbledon in terms of movement is maybe Djokovic because he is a great mover as well. And then of course there are two more strengths of Djokovic. One is his uh, serve that he has uh, you know immensely improved over the last few years. Uh, I mean when he started off when he had those physical issues his serve was also not very good. If you see uh, the US Open 2007 when he was up and coming player and he was playing really well but against Federer in the finals of the US Open you could clearly see that his first serve was not working and he made a lot of double faults so there was something to do with his toss maybe his uh, you know accuracy was also not there and his confidence was also not there but as years passed by he improved upon that and uh, right now his serve is definitely a weapon for him it's a very good first serve and even the second serve is really nice so i think djokovic can definitely count his serve as one of his strengths and the last but not the least strength of his is his fitness which uh, to be you know surprisingly i think it was one of his weaknesses when he started his career so when you see his matches in 2008 2009 i mean he was struggling a lot with his fitness issues but then he changed his diet then he changed his uh, uh, you know routine his regime and now i think his fitness is is uh, comparable to to nadal's fitness because he has given us uh, you know a lot of proofs a lot of examples where he has played tough five setters and he has somehow been able to win all those matches and uh, he has performed really well so i think he is one of the fittest players on tour right now uh, flexible in terms of the movement as well as you know uh, in in his shots his backhand is really nice his first serve is really good and there are not a lot of weaknesses in his game and we'll be talking about the weaknesses uh, in some time but i think strength wise he has almost all the strengths that one uh, a tennis player can have now let's talk about federer and his strengths so i think federer's primary strength as we all know is his forehand the most uh, you know lethal forehand uh, the the most smooth forehand that one can see it's it's quick it's crisp it's it's very nice to watch and i think uh, it's a very dangerous shot uh that he possesses and it's almost always in good form now lately as the years have passed and you know he has grown older his forehand sometimes in some matches does not fire and you can see the results that he mostly loses those matches but uh when we talk about even now uh most of the times it's consistent so we can definitely say that forehand is one of the strengths of of Roger Federer then the second strength is of course his serve so if you talk about accuracy if you talk about precision federer's serve is always up there and even if his game is not you know working well 
he's struggling with his movement whatever it is but i think his serve always sticks with him and that is why he's able to close some of the matches uh, even in the days on the days where he is not playing well he's struggling with his form but still if the opponent is not djokovic or not a nadal he is somehow able to win against those guys many uh, many times so i think that is also one of the strengths and then his slice so a lot of people talk about his backhand being a weakness but i think uh, one of the things that federer does have in his backhand is a very good slice a, uh, he has a lot of variety he can hit deep backhand slices he can hit short slices to bring the opponent in uh, for a for a volley and then hit a passing shot and he can also slow down the pace of the rally break the rhythm of the players so i think slice is one of the shot that he has actually used a lot against somebody like djokovic because djokovic is a rhythm player and he likes to you know hit the ball at a constant as a, at a consistent pace and if federer is able to use the slice and keep it low then it definitely helps against djokovic as well as against all those players who are you know uh, a bit taller and uh, who are not uh, who do not find it that easy to you know bend down on each point and sort of get ready uh, in position for the next shot so it always helps federer to sort of control the rally move the opponents around and give him some time to think about how to construct that point in between the rally so i think that is uh, one of the strengths that federer has and then of course the net play so federer has improved that a lot and once when he came uh, early in his career he was doing a lot of serve and volley in wimbledon and he was used to playing with that sort of style and i think that has continued that has also improved a lot and now uh, he's not afraid to go to the net in fact because of his current age because of the type of tennis that is being played now everybody is a good rally player everybody hits the ball hard so i think it's it has been it has become really important for all of the other players uh, all of the players who are 30 plus in terms of their age to try something different and i think volley is one of the things that uh, not all the players uh, have that as their strength and that is where i think federer excels because he has that ability to finish the point at the net almost 80 or 90% of the time and that actually can help him win a lot of matches against players even of the caliber of djokovic and nadal if it's a hard court and and uh, federer is playing well he can use his volley he can use his net game to finish some of the points and get victory as well so now let's talk about nadal's strengths so i think nadal's strengths in terms of his technical game again his is forehand comparable to roger federer his forehand is different but you know as lethal and as dangerous as federer's forehand so he can hit you know high loopy top spin balls he can also hit it flat he can change the direction any time he can hit the off forehand he can hit the inside in forehand and he can also vary the pace and his ability that you know most of the other players don't have is to run around his backhand and and use his forehand now i have never seen a player who can run around his backhand as much as nadal is able to do because of his movement because of his good balance that he is able to run out, run around some of the shots uh, that you know others players other players might not even think of you know running around their backhands and trying to go for a forehand but nadal has been able to do that time and time again and he is able to hit winners from that position so i think that is astonishing astonishing and that is one of the strength of nadal uh, his forehand is lethal forehand and then the next strength i think is of course his movement so he is also a great mover on every tennis court and i think especially on clay i think nobody moves better than nadal so that is also his strength then hey we have his wide serve so the natural serve that uh, nadal can you know do which uh, goes to the uh, right handers backhand i think that is one of the natural ability that nadal has and because he has a lot of slice and dice in his serve a lot of top spin so he can use that uh, uh, you know that kick serve as well as he can use his slice serve angled serve to you know push the opponent outside the doubles alley uh, while returning the ball and this strength this specific strength has nadal has helped nadal to you know come out of very tough situations in terms of you know points like deuce or advantage uh, and you know some important points so he always knows that if he is able to make this first serve and push the opponent outside the doubles alley 
then definitely he can go to the net and either finish the point with a volley or hit the ball in the open court so it's it's a go to serve for him like 70% or 75% of the time he uses that serve on important points and most of the times he's able to win the point uh, on the other times of course it also adds a variation for him so if he doesn't go for that serve because the opponent is always waiting for that serve he can also change the direction and go towards the tee and hence surprise his opponent as well so i think that is also a strength that nadal has and then of course the same strengths that we discussed about djokovic uh, being a rhythm player being a rally player nadal is able to rally for like 20 shots 25 shots and he is able to constantly do that for hours and hours and break the opponent down in terms of physical fitness and of course his fitness as well so nadal is also i think one of the most fittest players on tour if he's not injured i think to beat him in a five set match is is really difficult for any of the players even if they are playing well it's really difficult for any player to beat nadal in a five setter if nadal is fit so i think we talked about most of the strengths of djokovic uh, nadal and federer now let's talk about some of the weaknesses as well so we'll start off with djokovic and i think uh, there are not a lot of weaknesses i think the the least weaknesses are with Djokovic because he has uh, the most complete game I can think of between the three players and I think one of his weaknesses is a slice and dice game so we have seen a few matches wherein Djokovic uh, has somehow you know seemed uh, uncomfortable with the slowness of the game with the slowness of the rally so since Djokovic is a rhythm player he likes to uh, hit the ball at a constant pace as well as he likes to receive the ball at a constant pace now if you are able to vary vary that pace if you are able to hit some slice and dice and maybe hit some short slices move the ball around from side to side so you are not giving an easy shot for Djokovic to play and you are not giving giving any pace to Djokovic to sort of get ready and hit his forehand or backhand at a specific height uh, so I think that really troubles Djokovic and that is the only weakness I think that one can exploit in today's uh, scenario because I think his rally game is, is almost perfect and uh, if the surface is not clay, if it's a hard court, I think he's able to move freely and track down almost all the balls back. So I think uh, and even his return game is, is perfect. So I didn't mention that in the strength. So I think I remembered now. So his return game is one of the best. So that is one of the strength that Djokovic has. So you cannot beat him by serving really well. I mean, yes, of course, you can get some free points. But this is one of the factors why Federer has not been able to beat Djokovic a lot of times lately because Federer's serve works mostly against everybody else. But it doesn't work always against Djokovic because Djokovic is able to return well. And his returns are usually deep enough uh, so that the the server is not able to take advantage of his good serve. So I think that is uh, one of the strengths of Djokovic. And I think uh, so the only way that one can beat Djokovic, I think in terms of his weaknesses, is sort of varying the pace of the ball, playing a little bit slice and dice type of tennis. And then on clay, if we talk about the specific surface, as we discussed, uh, you know, in, in one of the previous videos that on, on a clay surface in French Open specifically, because Djokovic struggles with his movement, uh, it's it's really, uh, I think, important for a player, for an opponent to play aggressive against him. And we have seen the players like Wawrinka or Thiem, they have really played aggressive against him, uh, you know, going for, for their shots, dictating the play. Even Nadal in, in uh, the French Open final just a few few days back, so he was doing the same thing. He was being the aggressor. He was trying to play aggressive. And that is why he was able to win the match uh, so easily. So I think on clay, if you are a, if you are an aggressive player, if you can serve well, if you can attack and come to the net, I think that will help against Djokovic on clay. And that is why Federer has been able to beat Djokovic. If you see the 2011 French Open, as well as 2012 French Open, even though Federer lost that match, he was playing well even in that match. So Federer in French Open actually plays better against Djokovic uh, than, you know, playing against Nadal because against Nadal, Federer's aggressive tactics don't work that much because he doesn't get the opportunity to do, uh, do that because of the topspin of Nadal. But against Djokovic, that is not the case and that is why Federer plays well. 
and the likes of Wawrinka, Del Potro and the other players also play well against Djokovic on clay because of their aggressive nature. So, I think that is one other weakness that Djokovic has uh, against the aggressive players on clay is his movement. And then, I think I only already discussed the slice and dice or the, in other words, we can say the non-rhythm players. So, the players who have a lot of variety like Morfields or Fabrice Santoro for that, for that matter. So, all those players who can bring something else on the court apart from, you know, the usual forehand and the usual backhand. Something to, you know, make Djokovic think, something to take Djokovic out of the com- of his comfort zone. So, those sort of players do trouble Djokovic. And I think uh, right now, if somebody wants to beat Djokovic, that is the area that they should explore, uh, you know, to do something different on court. Because if you're just going to rally against Djokovic and you're just trying to hit the same pace, the same ball, with the same serve, I think that's not going to help against Djokovic. He's going to really uh, win that match easily. So, let's talk about the weaknesses of Federer. Now, we all know that Federer's one-handed backhand on clay has been uh, a weakness for him over the years. And I think that is what uh, also uh, happens on the other courts. Now, right now, I would say Federer's backhand has improved a lot. I mean, it was good in 2006 and 2007. Even in 2008, his backhand was good. But then once he got injured after that, I think his backhand, uh, you know, declined in terms of his quality, in terms of his depth. And then it it remained the same throughout, like for the next six to seven years or eight years. But then since 2017, he has decided that uh, he has to use the a different racket, a greater uh, bracket head, as as well as he has decided to hit a lot of balls down the line aggressively, you know, coming on top of the ball and playing it on the rise. I think that is something he was afraid of maybe, or maybe he didn't want to take that chance. But now, because he has become more confident, and this confidence is also a necessity for him, because he knows if he doesn't do it, then maybe he'll not be able to win those matches and he will not be able to finish the points as early as he wants to do because of his age. So, I think it's more of a necessity for him and that is where his coach Lubicic and, and the others have, uh, you know, made a good move that they have actually encouraged him to do that. And now we all can see that it has paid off and it's not a weakness anymore. But yes, if you relate it to the other shots that he has, I would say... Uh, backhand is definitely one of his weaknesses compared to his other shots. Now, when we talk about his second weakness, right now is definitely his movement and fitness because uh, of his age, of course, uh, he needs to finish the points early and he also gets tired uh, earlier as compared to the other players who are probably younger. So, if it's a five-set match and the conditions are hot and humid and it's, it's really hard to play out there, then definitely at the age of 39 or 40 years, you can definitely say that Federer would be the underdog in that scenario because of the conditions and because of his age. So I think that is uh, also one of the current weakness that he has in his game. Now let's talk about uh, Nadal's weaknesses. So Nadal's weakness, I would say, is is uh, his, uh, I would say, his first serve uh, because even though he's serving well, but relative to his other shots, his first serve is not that uh, that much of a weapon that the other players have. So if you compare his first serve with Djokovic or or Federer, I think it's relatively weaker. But even then, I think it's it's a good serve. So I'm not taking anything away from his first serve. But of course, relative to the other players, it's it's a little bit weaker. And then of course his. Uh, rhythm as well so not on every surface but uh, of course if you talk about grass for example uh, we have seen players like lucas rosal or uh, dustin brown or nick kyrgios beat him at wimbledon uh, in three or four sets and that has happened because of the style of tennis that they play first of all they have a lot of variety so they can come to the net they can hit the volley they can hit slice as well and second, the nature of play, the, the style of play that they employ against Nadal. So they, uh, you know, hit, try to hit most of the balls as winners, out and out winners. They are not trying to engage in any sort of rally with Nadal. So they all have good serves, huge serves. So that takes care of their service games. And when they are returning against Nadal, then they just go all out for winners. 
and i think that is something that uh, doesn't uh, encourage nadal or that doesn't help nadal to get into the rhythm that he always likes to do because nadal is sort of a player who likes to get into the rhythm even if you see his practices uh, his build up to the grand slams he plays a lot of matches he plays a lot of tournaments because he likes to have that extra practice and it you know helps uh, him grow his confidence it helps his confidence to play a lot of tournaments even though if he loses uh, those tournaments if he gets to the quarter final stage or semi final stage even then because he gets a lot of matches because he gets uh, to play a lot and put in a lot of hours on the court it helps him gain confidence and i think that also applies to the uh, to the matches on court so if straight away you keep going for winners against him even though you are missing you are not giving nadal any sort of rhythm so it's on your racket and even nadal knows that and he doesn't like it that you have the ball you have the match on your racket so i think that is something that the players who are trying to beat nadal need to employ but again this tactic doesn't help in all the surfaces so it has to be sort of a balance between this tactic because let's say you are going for winners and none of your winners are you know uh, uh, getting on the court maybe you are hitting the net maybe you are not hitting the ball correctly so it's going to be a six love set for nadal right so i think uh, you need to also understand the dynamics of the whole match and and your strengths of course but i think this is one of the area that one can explore to not give nadal any sort of rhythm in the match maybe go for drop shots go for slices or go for outright winners come to the net on especially on hard courts i'm talking about on clay it's not that easy to do to come to the net every time and uh, federer has tried that in 2008 and you can all see the result nadal was you know up for it and he was ready for uh, you know he was ready with all the passing shots every almost every time so i think that logic doesn't work always but i think that's definitely one of the way that at least you can take the strength out of uh, you know nadal's game on that particular surface if it's a hard court if it's a quick court and if you do possess a good serve and if you are, if you are able to hold your serve for like three all or four all or five all then definitely you have that luxury to go for an all out attack and if it's, if you can get to a love 30 or 15 30 then nadal will also find it difficult to you know produce Uh, a very good first serve and then you also have more confidence to hit uh, you know more winners and go to the net and ask that question uh, for a passing shot and maybe get a break and get a set so this is how it can start you know that's the start to keep you know your serve first of all hold your serve and then you can try different things on nadal's uh, serve as well so i think uh, that's all the weaknesses that uh, nadal has now we also talked about the barometer the basis on which we can decide just by looking at one of the match uh, of these three guys whether they are playing in top form or not or whether they are struggling so of course i will talk about one specific shot so i think we all know that for djokovic it is his backhand down the line so if djokovic is hitting his backhand down the line consistently in a match and he is hitting it well so he is not making a lot of errors then you can say that djokovic is obviously playing in good form because these are uh, the shots that uh, are really good to watch i mean when we watch these shots we say that is the best shot that djokovic has uh, for federer we say his backhand down the line is is like a you know picture it's a picture perfect shot for us but then for them to be able to play those shots uh, in tough moments and in important moments is really difficult if they are not feeling good about their own form and this is why i think these shots provide us a clear sign clear indication of whether they are in good form or not so djokovic is back and down the line is is the barometer for for him and then when we talk about uh, federer i think for federer there are two shots so one of the shot is his back and down the line of course uh, if he is hitting that shot well if he is going for that shot he is not trying to always run around his back hand and go for his forehand i think that gives uh, the indication that federer is playing well so if he's ready to you know stand on his ground and hit take the ball on his backhand even when you can feel that uh, he has a chance to run around his backhand and hit a forehand but if he stays on his ground and hits a good backhand and of course when he hits a backhand down the line constantly and well you can definitely say that he's he's in top form 
the second shot that Federer has is the inside in forehand. So he uh, not he doesn't use that uh, usually. Most of the time he plays cross court uh, forehand or sometimes he goes the, for the down the line forehand. Uh, the off forehand also is is a very uh, usual shot for Federer, but the inside in forehand is is not a usual shot. So when he's playing well, he tries it a lot of times, and most of the times he succeeds as well. So I think the inside forehand, inside in forehand for Federer, as well as the backhand down the line, is also a barometer. Now when we talk about Nadal, I think Nadal's uh, best shot is his forehand down the line, forehand up the line, wherein. Uh, you know he drags the opponent outside the double sally and then uses the open court and also has a lot of spin a lot of curve on the ball uh, the banana shot as well so i think these two shots for nadal are the barometer whether he's playing well or not so when you uh, see him not try these shots when he always uses his forehand cross court doesn't use his forehand down the line and also you can, uh, so that is the first sign that you can say that Nadal maybe is a bit tentative or he's not playing or he's not confident that much on his in his form. And the second thing as well is even though he's not going for his forehand down the line, but he's always hitting his forehand cross court a bit short than he usually does. So you can see his matches against Djokovic, you can see US Open 2011. In, uh, you can see the match and Joko, I mean, Nadal was not playing that bad. He was, uh, I mean, not making more errors. He was also moving well. But you could definitely see that most of his forehand shots were cross court. He was not hitting them down the line. That definitely meant that he was lacking confidence against Djokovic. As well as his forehands cross court were, uh, you know, mostly short. And Djokovic was able to step into the court and then dictate the play from there. If Nadal would have been able to hit one or two good forehand down the line, then those would have been surely winners because Djokovic was up in the court and, you know, standing on the backhand side, waiting for uh, Nadal to hit a cross court forehand. So if Nadal would have been able to hit down the line, then definitely it would have changed the complexion of the match and also maybe the outcome. But uh, so that was one of the examples that I just uh, talked about where you know Nadal was not hitting, not using his forehand down the line. So that is definitely one of the barometer for Nadal. Now coming to the third point where I would give you a few examples of some of the matches where the weakness or strengths of these players can be uh, easily seen. So one of the matches, let's first talk about the, the matches where these weaknesses have been exposed and, and hence these players have struggled to win. So, if you talk about Djokovic, I think you can, uh, I don't remember the exact year, but there is a match uh, between Djokovic and Monfields and uh, I think it's available on YouTube and uh, it's it's labeled as a strange, strangest match ever or something like that. So, you can watch that video and there you can see that Djokovic was struggling to win points against Monfields because Monfields was not providing him any pace on the ball. So, he was using slice and very uh, sort of, you know, uh, casual shots Morphys was hitting and Djokovic was just not finding any rhythm because of this variety, because of this change of tactic that Morphys had, had uh, brought into the court that day. And you can see the results even though Djokovic won the match eventually in the end, but he struggled a lot. Uh, usually he doesn't do that. So, and then you can also see his matches against Santoro. Sometimes he struggles uh, against uh, Santoro as well. And then when we talk about uh, Federer, so Federer's, of course, we talked about his single-handed backhand being a weakness on play. So you can watch any match against against Nadal, uh, to be honest, in the French Open. But I would say uh, where this uh, one of the instances where this has, uh, you know, impacting impacted him mostly. If you see the French Open 2007, I think Federer played a very good match. And he was he was having like 15 to 16 breakpoint chances. And but if you see after the second set or the third set, Nadal was really giving all the balls to Federer's backhand. He knew that Federer is playing well today, and if Nadal doesn't use that tactic, he might as well lose the match. So he was going on almost all shot to the you know to the backhand of Federer. And Federer, I think, uh, was not playing with a good strategy. Uh, in the second third second set onwards in that match because he was trying to rally with Nadal 
cross court to cross court uh, with his backhand to Nadal's forehand and eventually I mean as we all know that because it's not as good a shot as Nadal's forehand and because of the bounce because of the surface it's very difficult for Federer to you know hit those shoulder height backhands so eventually after two or three shots he will definitely give a weaker reply a short ball in the middle of the court or maybe make an unforced error and that's what happened so if you see the second set third set and fourth set of that match you can definitely see that Federer kept trying to hit that shot kept trying to hit cross court and eventually, you know, lost because of the way Nadal was opening up the court. So had Federer, you know, gone for backhand down the line or on most of the occasions or used his slice, quick slice, you know, uh, down the line that he used sometimes, I think the outcome or maybe the score line would have been a little bit more on Federer's side. But I think that is one of the weakness uh, that you can see, especially in that match. And of course, there are a lot of other examples as well. Now, when we talk about Nadal, as we discussed his movement uh, on, on grass, as well as his uh, uh, the ability of the other players to serve well and attack and not give him any sort of rhythm is one of the weaknesses. So if you see his matches in Wimbledon, uh, I mean, there are many matches against Kyrgios. Then you have the match against Dustin Brown. You have the match against Lucas Rosol. So he has struggled with the players who have good serve and who hit aggressive shots. Even against Muller, if you see, it was a five set. Nadal played really well. But because of the serve of Muller and because of the aggressive nature, he was not able to win that match. So I think uh, these are some of the examples uh, for, for, for that. And now let's talk about the strengths. So we'll talk about those matches in which these weaknesses that I just discussed about somehow were not there on that specific day. So Federer's backhand was working really well, for example. So if we go by that example, you can see the Shanghai 2006 final between Federer and James Blake. I think that is one of the matches where Federer's backhand was, you know, at his best. You can see a lot of winners and it, he was just, you know, hitting the winners as per his wish and mostly down the line. So you can see that match and then of course recently you can see the Indian Wells 2017 uh, between Federer and Nadal as well as the Australian Open 2017 between Federer and Nadal. So I think in both those matches Federer's backhand was really working well and you can see the specific the down the line as well as the cross court. Cross court had a bit more zip into it and the down the line was also pretty consistent and he was using it more often. So I think uh, that is one of the matches for Federer. If you want to watch uh, the matches of Djokovic, so I think even with the slice and dice and everything, if you watch the matches between Djokovic and Andy Murray, you can see that, uh, I mean, both those players use a lot of variety, also use a lot of rhythm, but in the end, Djokovic has the extra gear. So if you want to see Djokovic win, uh, even when playing a lot of slice and dice, you can watch his matches against Andy Murray specifically uh, at the Australian Open because he has, I think, beaten Murray uh, twice or thrice uh, in the finals of the Australian Open uh, playing the same way. So they have used rhythm, they have used slice and dice. Uh, the sets have been close, the sets have been long in duration, but then somehow Djokovic has always been able to win that in the end. And I think as the last point, I would say Nadal. So for Nadal, his weakness, uh, of course, is movement as well as his... Uh, uh, you know, trying to play a rhythm match. So I think if you watch US Open 2010, the whole tournament as well as US Open 2017 or 18. So you can see how Nadal changed his tactic and was able to win uh, those tournaments because he, first of all, he went for a bigger first serve. Okay, so he was going for winning the point, winning some free points on his serve. He was not just trying to open the point with his serve and then maybe dictate it with the rally, but he was at actually trying to win the point. And secondly, his aggression. So if you see these tournaments, 2010, 2017 and 2018 in the US Open. So you can see there were a lot of matches where Nadal actually lost the first set. Uh, when I talk about 17 and 18 uh, years, I think Nadal lost the first set to Del Potro also in one of those uh, tournaments and some of the other players as well. And then suddenly he just, you know, sort of a switch. He just 
completely changed his tactic. He went for bigger first serves and he started playing really aggressive from that point on. And then you can see the results. He, you know, ended up winning the last three sets like 6-1, 6-2, 6-3. So he was not even giving games uh, to the other uh, players once he changed the strategy. So I think if you say that Nadal is a rally player and he's a rhythm player and he doesn't play that aggressive, I would suggest you to watch those tournaments where Nadal has actually played really aggressive. And you can see what difference does it make when Nadal starts playing aggressive on a hard court. I mean, it's almost impossible to beat him because, I mean, he can run down all, all your shots. He can serve well and he can attack with his forehand and his backhand. And it's it's a joy to watch if he's playing aggressive. So I think, guys, uh, let me know in the comments what do you feel about all this analysis. And if you want, if you have any points, uh, in the next video, I think we'll try to analyze how these big three guys can, uh, you know, beat each other. What What is there in the strategy that they can change? Uh, I know that they have played a lot of times against each other and they know each other in and out. But still, I think, as they say, if you are too close to something, then you can't see it. So I think maybe we'll just try to analyze if there is anything that these three players can change when they play against themselves so that, you know, they can sort of improve the record against each other. So we'll discuss that in the next video. And, uh, you know, thanks. Thank you guys for watching this video.